Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Thursday, December 12, 2013. Our top story comes from the world of neuroscience. Researchers from Case Western Reserve University and the University of Kansas have been experimenting with neural prosthetics in rats and have encouraging results. More conventional prosthetics being developed for limbs work by detecting patterns in the brain and translating those into equivalent actions that an arm or leg would do. These neural prosthetics are essentially the same concept, except instead of connecting to a mechanical device, they are closed loop within the brain. The researchers created an animal model of brain injury by severing the connections between the front and back region of the brain that controlled the rat's forearm. This greatly diminished their performance in the task of reaching through a narrow opening to get a food pellet. Two weeks of being equipped with the neural prosthesis essentially bridged the two formerly severed regions of the brain. Electrodes and the frontal region picked up on signals that the area is producing. A small external microchip then processes the signals to eliminate noise and correctly translate the resulting patterns. And finally, the device sends that pattern as an electrical impulse to the back region of the brain. Using the prosthetic, the rats were able to reach the food pellet 70% of the time, which was about as good as uninjured rats whereas rats that received random signaling from the prosthetic, or no signal at all, only succeeded about 50 and 25 percent of the time, respectively. The hope is to develop these prosthetics for human use, helping the millions of people with traumatic brain injuries and strokes. The next question the researchers will be investigating is whether these neural prosthetics can be used on a temporary basis while a less severe brain injury is healing. Next, we have an update from the world of biology. Many times on the show, we have discussed spider silk for its amazing mechanical and chemical properties, and how many are trying to produce it on a large scale for many applications. Now, some scientists from Oxford University have made some interesting discoveries by studying its electrical properties. Spiders coat their web in a kind of electrostatic glue, which is amazingly able to attract both positive and negatively charged objects. You see, flying insects naturally build up a static charge, which means that the spider web will actually move towards prey over a very short distance. Conversely, this electric field may allow certain insects to actually detect and avoid spider webs. Although flying insects can detect electric fields, not all may be quick enough to react and avoid the spider web so quickly. This interesting property of spider silk may also have useful applications for humans as the glue also naturally captures pollen, dust, and many types of pollutant molecules. Harvesting of some spider webs may help scientists monitor the environment, since they are so effective at capturing airborne molecules. Particular interest is in monitoring the air quality and the presence of pesticides, especially as it applies to those chemicals that may be harmful to the bee population. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. What would you use spider silk for? And don't just say becoming a Spider-Man. Let us know your thoughts on that and all the stories in the comments.